everybody. In today's video, I'm going to show you a design that I absolutely am head over heels in love with. It is a Snickers bar with, it's the wrapped, it's half wrapped and it's got the wrapper that's broken and peeled open and then the Snickers bar is stretched out like you see in the commercials. And I used spider gel that was like a nice warmy gold color to create that caramel that stretches between the two pieces, which I personally, not to toot my own horn or anything, but I think that was a stroke of genius. I am so like, this is awesome. I hope you guys are as completely obsessed with it as I am. And I can't wait to show you more of these little candy bar videos because I'm sure there'll be more of them coming up. So don't forget to click subscribe so you don't miss those either. Bye. So to start this nail, I'm going to begin with an overlay of cover pink, just so that the background of the nail pretty much disappears. Anytime I want something really detailed and really extreme on the foreground of the nail, so like the 3D art, 4D art, etc., then I really want just a smooth, invisible background. So for this particular one, cover pink seems like the way to go, so just file it into shape to make sure it's nice and smooth, and then we can move on to the fun stuff. On a silicone art mat, I'm going to begin painting my Snickers wrapper. So I have some brown gel polish and I'm just going to paint a rectangle with it. And then moving on to some white gel polish, although actually after I did it with white gel polish, I decided that white gel paint probably would have been a better choice just because it would have a little bit of a more opaque finish to it after one coat. But two coats of white gel polish also works. And depending on your white, you may not have to worry about that anyway, because some white gel polishes are crazy opaque. But then after you have that little, almost like a parallelogram, like a slightly rounded parallelogram for the beginning of the logo then with some dark blue gel polish we're going to start writing the word snickers across that shape and when you're writing something really small like this and you're trying to use a gel product then you want to use gel paint for sure because gel polish because of the purpose of gel polish in you know your regular applications is to self-level and give you these nice smooth even surfaces it's going to also self-level when you're painting little details like this, which is going to smooth out some of the details that you want and like that R and S that are touching right now, if that was gel polish instead of gel paint, it would have just smooshed all together and blended and not given crisp, clean details and lines. So if you don't have any gel paint and you are procrastinating on getting gel paint because it is ridiculously expensive, and trust me, everybody, I, I know, it's not a cheap product to have then maybe acrylic paint would be the way to go for this instead. Just try to keep those those lines um, or try to limit the amount of layers of acrylic paint that you have to do in a design like this because it won't bend very well. It'll crack. And so you have to, with all these types of things, it's so hard because certain products have certain uses and benefits and downfalls and some work easy for some people and some of them work better for other people. And so it's, it's hard. And I know for this, I would much have rather used acrylic paint because I just like it better myself, but gel is bendy. It's flexible and it stays flexible. So in something like this, where you want it to be flexible so you can bend it around later and be able to manipulate it that way, you kind of need to use a gel product if you have it available to you. And so as much as, you know, it's expensive and kind of sticky, there's, there's definitely uses. So after I have the Snickers written out and cured, I'm going to go back through with white. And this time I did switch to gel paint instead of gel polish because I was like, I don't know why I used it the first time, but we're going to be doing just a little bit of a cleanup process. So we're going to go through and kind of make sure each of those letters are crisp and clean and clear. And because I did clean up my lines with a little bit of nail cleanser at one point throughout the middle of writing out the word, there's just a little bit of a blue kind of a fog around some of it. So I'm going to be cleaning up all of that and just perfecting the shape of my little parallelogram and fixing everything up. And that way gel paint, you don't have to worry about it self-leveling at all. So you can really get nice, crisp, clean, sharp lines with it. So then after you have all of those lines cleaned up and you make sure that it's nice and smooth, then you can go through and do a little bit of a, a highlighty little line on the letters. So that's one thing that Snickers has is that it has like a little highlight here and there on the letters. And then with some red, and I'm, I think I'm using gel polish again. I sometimes don't remember what exactly I used because you can use either one, but we're going to do a little outline around our parallelogram with red so that if your parallelogram wasn't completely smooth and perfect in that initial shape, you can clean up the edges at this point if you, if it's something you need to, or just follow them if they were perfect to start with. And just add that little bit of red and now I'm going to go through and add more highlights to my little Snickers logo 
as you're doing these highlights, if this is something that you know in yourself, those highlights are just not going to go well because your lines are going to be too thick. And, you know, you, line control takes a lot of practice. So if you don't have it down yet, just skip that part. Just go right beyond it and say, yeah, no, I'm not going to bother with it. But then after you have all of your painting done and you're happy with it, you can apply a layer, a thin layer of gel top coat over your little Snickers logo and then save that piece until we get done making our Snickers. So we're going to start with the nougat layer and I'm going to make my Snickers in two separate pieces because I want them to be opened up and there's different options. Like you could do this design and make variations of it where you have the whole Snickers bar that's not opened up or taken a bite of it. You can have it like I did where it's almost like it was broken up and then pulled, which I think is such a cool effect. Or you could even do one where it looks like somebody took a bite out of it. There's just all these different choices that you can make for this design and still have it be very Snickersy. And then after you have the nougat layer, then you're going to need to do the caramel layer. So with a caramel color, which for me, I think is called warm gold. And I have a warm gold from two different brands and they look identical and their names are identical. Um, Koopa used to have a, they used to make little pots of acrylic and they don't do that anymore. They, when they switched to dipping powder, you can no longer buy those, but, um, their art affinity acrylics used to be a different color. And that's where my warm gold came from. So it's, it's not a new one. It's definitely an old product, but then we're going to begin covering our bar with the chocolate. And I did this in a couple different segments to make it easier, but for the first one place down. And if you have a, like a slightly shimmery Brown, that would work pretty well. Cause chocolate to me, especially since it has kind of like a waxy shine to it. If you have a slightly shimmery Brown, it'll kind of give itself to that waxy finish, but you're going to need to cover your Snickers bar. So you want to cover the top, the bottom and the sides. And obviously the bottom right now is against the nail form backing. So you can't even get to it. So after you have the top and the bottom or the top and the sides done, you're going to have to flip over your Snickers bar and do the bottom as well. And then after that, you're going to want to add a little bit of a kind of a swirly texture to the very top of the bar. So place down another little bit of that acrylic. And then as it is setting up, use the tip of your brush to sort of push it back and forth to give it that swirly look. Now I'm going to trim the wrapper so that the edges are nice and straight and then gently bend it. And then after it's kind of starting to bend, you're going to take your Snickers bar and take one of the half pieces and place it inside the wrapper. And then after you have it in the wrapper, we're going to want to glue it down. So it doesn't, you don't want it to go all the way to the end. You want it to kind of be in the middle almost of the wrapper. So then glue it in place, hold until the glue sets and then wrap the wrapper all the way around it. And my wrapper wasn't quite wide enough to fully cover my Snickers bar, but that's just fine. That's not an issue. And after you have that done, you're going to want to glue the ends of it together, put a little bit more nail glue in the ends, and then just fold those ends in and then hold them shut. A little tweezers, if you have one that could hold that and pinch it closed, might be helpful if you don't want to get nail glue on your fingers like I did. And then you're going to do the same to the other side. So you're effectively sealing in that first little bit of the Snickers bar that you made because you want to cut it open. You want to be able to actually like open and rip apart this wrapper, which seems very sad when you just work so hard on painting the logo to rip it. But that is what we're going to do. So then cut it a little bit. And then after you cut it, I'm going to pull it open. And it does, it does rip. So, you know, kind of enjoy that process. But then we're going to attach the Snickers bar to the nail with a little bit of Acrogel and then glue those bits of wrapper open with some nail glue so that they don't, because they're going to want to almost reclose in on themselves. So pull them apart and then glue them down so that you can see that exposed Snickers bar within, within the wrapper. So then hold that open and hold it like that. And then put a little bit more of the Acrogel down away, like a, you know, directly across from this piece that started and then just leave that there. That's to start us out so that when we get to the point where we want to seal this down, we can, and then place down some gold spider gel. This is the secret ingredient to this whole design. So you have the gold spider gel right in the caramel layer of your Snickers bar, and then press your two pieces of the bar together even though my wrapper was kind of hindering this experiment, but you're going to want to try to get that Snickers bar so that the two sides touch and then you can pull the caramel and then you get these little caramel strings that go from one side of the bar to the other and it looks so real and so awesome and it was really pretty easy. I just love it. And then finish the whole design with some matte top coat over the background and then some matte top coat over the Snickers bar as well. And then this is it. I love this nail so much, you guys. I can't even explain it. It's just so cute and so perfect and it looks so real and it was actually pretty easy to make the Snickers bar. So I hope you love it as much as I do and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well.